This is about Pookie. Pookie? The cat. <laughs> Pookie? The cat? She said it was our other child. Well, did you get a paternity test? You're not going to take me serious, are you? Charles has cancer. Charles, outside of Christ, you are my everything. It shrank down to the size of like a, like a hazelnut. You know, Lynn, when I first came in, you had that far away look like you get when something's really bothering you. I just want to sit down and cry my eyes out. For heaven's sake, Lynn, what is it? It's Mama Scott, that's who it is. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry for the interruption, but Deacon Hall wanted me to drop the budget numbers by. Oh, uh -huh. that'll make you cry. Isn't that what I need? Give it back to him. <laughs> Listen, while you're here, everybody knows you've got a big family. Yes. I'm assuming they attend a variety of churches in the area. Yes, they do. And on Sundays, they are scattered all over the place. Okay. And in all these churches that they attend, the variety of churches, how many of them have any kids? Some have a few little ones, mm -hmm. but mostly somebody's grandbabies, but hardly ever any older ones. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what's bothering you. Mm -hmm. And of all those churches, the ones that don't have any kids, kids, by the way, God's next generation, how many of them do you think are still going to be around in, say, 25, 30 years? You know, I've been thinking about that also, and I doubt if there will be many. And that's what's consuming me. God's church without our next generation. I'm telling you, every day I go out, during my travels now, it depends on which way I go, but I'll pass two, three, sometimes four churches that I know aren't going to be around in 10 years, much less 25 or 30. It's heartbreaking. One has closed in my neighborhood already. There you go. So knowing you, you've got some grand plan to change that. Not really, but I know who does. So after y'all leave, later in the morning, I'm going to hit the land, and I'm going to spend some time talking to my Heavenly Father. His next generation, those kids, they're His heart. He'll show us what to do. Yes, He will. Yes. Look, I'm done talking about it. I have forgiven her of her transgressions and I'm trying to move on with my life and I wish she would do the same. Uh-huh. Don't you even think about it. Don't you dare tell her where I work. Remember this. I know things. Things you probably don't want to get out. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Comprende? Right. Bye. Dude, you have no idea how stressed out I am. Man, I don't want to hear it. Pastor stuck me with mentoring Jawbreaker. 
the mafia kingpin. Now that's real stress. Whatever, that's just a little old bitty pimp. I'm talking about a bona fide stalker ex-wife. I'm talking about a woman that is bent on making my life miserable. Well, I tell you what, let's exchange. I'll take the ex-wife and you take the seven foot four inch pimp and then we'll revisit stress. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Having a little love fest around here, are we? Mm, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> what? You dyed your beard. I didn't. Did so? I didn't. Did so? I didn't. Did so? I put some color in it because I don't want to look like an old gray goat. And you think color in a few is mean you're not going to look like... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. <laughs> Where was I? Ah, yes. Does my heart so much good to come in here and see the leaders of the church focusing upon ministerial issues? Mm. Or is this just a little bit of male bonding going on? No. Have you met her? <laughs> Have you met my ex-wife? A woman that redefines the word domestic terrorist? New, no, I haven't met your ex-wife, but I can tell you one thing. If you don't start focusing on church business, I'm going to find her and I'm going to send her straight to your front door. <laughs> and what bug flew up your nose? Well, let me think about it. It could be that seven foot four inch Aryan Nation refugee that you had me working with. I just thought we could work on a little character. His character, I assume, because my character is just fine. Thank you. <laughs> That's debatable. Come on. Where is everybody? They should be on their way. Yeah. Speaking of bugs, what's bugging you today? And what is this meeting all about? Talk. We don't have to wait for them. Talk to me. All right. Yes, yeah, something's bothering me. If y'all will recall, when the deacons first asked me to become pastor, I wasn't all that excited about it. Hmm. I know that's right. Neither was I. Look, save it. Go ahead. I wasn't excited because I knew what the call God had on this church, and in order to fulfill it, we were going to have to make some serious changes. Yeah, and Lord knows you love change. And Lord knows you don't. Having said that, come on y'all, y'all have to admit it. We've had some pretty awesome progress around here. Yeah, we've been growing. Huh? Yeah, we got three new couples last Sunday. And that's the problem. Hmm. Couples. You mean couples without kids. Oh. Exactly. If we're only attracting couples without kids, we're failing. No kids, no future for the church. Look, some churches just weren't meant for kids. D D did he just say that? Look, I'm just saying, when you get a certain age, you don't want kids, period. Now, I don't know. Now, I'm you just saying. Kids are right. you know, right. you 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 problems, you and we don't be need kids. And you can't, <laughs> hey, Gina, hey, come on in. Hey. Hey, Gina. Hello. Pastor, excuse me, but I have a friend who I think you'd like to meet. Well, I certainly like her taste in sweaters. So I see. Mm. <laughs> this is Cheryl Seavers. We actually just finished having lunch, and we kind of overheard your conversation. Uh, they call that eavesdropping, don't they? What side of the bed did you get up on this morning? <laughs> Does it matter? He was in there alone. Ooh, you don't say. What'd you do this time? Now, come on, you just tell old Pastor everything. Oh, I want to hear every detail. Pastor. You just tell me. Pastor. Huh? I want to know it. Pastor. Huh? Sorry. Uh, Cheryl, was it? Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice Cheryl. to meet you. Now, go ahead, tell her. Well, to be honest, Gina has been trying to get my friend and me 
to start attending this church. Hmm. So why haven't you? Yeah, why haven't you? I'm sure Gina's told you all the things we have to offer. Maybe, but not what we need. Well, what kind of things do you need that we don't offer? Kids and things for kids to do. I am officially going to cry. Hmm, deep. I believe the Lord is trying to tell us something. You think? Cheryl, it appears obvious the Lord has sent you here, so let me properly introduce ourselves. I'm Lynn Jenkins. That's Pastor McKnight and Deacon Hall. I'm assuming you have kids? Grandkids, actually. Grandkids? They're 13 and 14. Ooh, the Lord has held you up good, girl. I'd never believe it. So what do they like to do? They like to change things. That's what they like to do. I am so sorry. You just have to really be patient with him. You see, the truth of the matter is, he was just released from the one foot in the grave old poop's home. Please. <laughs> but we love him. She's just kidding. Although. Mm. <laughs> Does this go on often? <laughs> Pretty much nonstop, but. It does keep things interesting around here. Mm. Uh, anyway, back to my question. So what types of things do they like to do? All things social media. Mm -hmm. They especially love to video with their iPhones. Whoa. Hey, I, we like to do that too, right? Hey, we got some money shots, right? Ooh, honey, do we have some shots? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> what I want to know is what's wrong with a good book? You know, kids these days are so interested in letting everybody know where they are or where they've been. They don't have time to accomplish anything else. Wonder if they'd have time to help me get you back in the old poop zone. And you are wrong about them not accomplishing anything. They're honing their skills. Do you have any idea what they do with what they film? Now, what do they do with what they film? Well, they go over to my friend's house and they edit everything that they shoot with her kids, now that's a skill. And then they upload it to the internet. So does anybody watch? Hundreds of people. You wouldn't believe it. Hundreds of people? Hey, maybe they can advertise for the church. We might get a lot of new members. Well, it wouldn't do any good if we don't have anything for the kids to do once they get here. He is so right. Cheryl, is there any possibility for the two of us to get together in the next couple days? I've got a sneaky suspicion that you have some wise wisdom to give us. Well, it just so happens I'll be in the area tomorrow. Does two work for you? Two is perfect. Can we meet here? Sure. And thank you. No, thank you. Like you said, they're God's next generation and we all want them to be in the Lord's house. So this encourages me. <laughs> Are you a happy camper now? You betcha. Happy, happy, happy. How about you, Deacon Hall? We happy, happy, happy? Mm -hmm. Kids. Now you know I'm a happy camper today, so don't you go raining on my parade. Well, I'm just asking a really valid question here. What are we going to do with that old building? And we still don't have enough to bring it up to cold. We got more than we had. Did you see the new gift that came in? No, I guess I haven't. What gift? The $5,000 gift. $5,000? Yep. Who sent it? I don't know. Don't know who it was. Didn't recognize the name. Came in from out of town, and I'm just assuming it was, I don't know, maybe somebody related to somebody in the congregation. But $5,000. Well, that's neither here nor there, and it still doesn't get us where we need to be. No, but what it does is just verify that God is a miracle-working God. And let me tell you something. He's sitting on his throne, and all he has to do is just very lightly move his pinky, and by midnight tonight, we'll have every penny we need in the bank. That's God. Well, I don't know about all that. What I don't know about is whether or not we're even meant to go back to that building. I just don't know. Are you serious? We need a home. I thought you just referred to it as that old building. Well, it is old, but it's home. 
to find home. Oh, here you are, Lynn. Hey, girl. Hey. And there you are. Now, Mary, don't get me started. This isn't the time. Ooh, that must mean him in a doghouse. What do you do this time? Come on, come on. I got pencil. I want to know every detail. Oh, when you big baby. It's not babysitting anyway. It's called mentoring. Mentoring, babysitting. What's the difference? The difference is you become a head deacon or not. Now, Mary, don't get me started. Don't get me started. You know how it's going to end. <laughs> oh, hi, guys. Mrs. Hall, can we come in? Sure, come on in. Ooh, if we don't have some cutie patooties here. Right. Yes, I babysit them. This is Andre and Benjamin. I babysit them when their parents have to unexpectedly work. And today, what did we do, guys? Bake cookies. Ooh, cookies. And they insisted on bringing Uncle Lamar some. And they look wonderful. Uncle Lamar? Yes, Uncle Lamar. They don't have much supervision at home. So when they come over, they love it when Uncle Lamar plays with them. Isn't that right, boys? Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, butter man called me a biscuit. Did you say he plays with them? Yes, doesn't he, guys? Yes. Yep. Fist Lamar? <laughs> well, now, now, come to think of it, all you have to do is play with Jawbreaker. Come on, try basketball, tennis, go bowling. What do you mean basketball, tennis? You mean carjacking, selling drugs, or robbing a bank? Just go build a relationship with him. And you might become his Uncle Lamar. Oh, oh, I got an idea. Name tag, big name tag. <laughs> Uncle Lamar, big letters, right on his chest. What you think? Uh-huh. Now you see what you started, Mary. I'm never gonna have any peace. Hey guys, what do you got there? Uncle Lamar, we baked these cookies just for you. And they look delicious. We all did. And did all of you decorate them too? Yes. Yep. Wow. They did. They will keep my oven fired up all day if I let them. And you know what? That's all right with me because they turn out some pretty good eats. But it wouldn't be fine for that belly. Hey, you leave this belly alone. I've invested a lot into this belly and I want to keep it happy. Did he just make a joke? Yes. <laughs> but i tell you, I got an idea. Don't anybody move. I'm coming right back. Well, while she's gone, is it cookie time? No. <laughs> All right, y'all, I'm coming. I'm coming. I've got an idea. Oh, boy. All right, now, let's put this down. Benjamin, you got your own here. Now, these are some soft cookies. And we got all that candy. So y'all, would you mind showing us how you decorate yeah. cookies? Yay! Yay. Go Let ahead. it rip. Sure how talented you guys are. Benjamin, I have a suggestion. Why don't you use some peppermint? No, because I don't like peppermints. They smell good, but they do not taste good. Ah. And I've tried one before, and I did not like it. Oh, okay. All right. He told you. I guess he did. <laughs> what about you, Erin? What uh, do you like? Uh, <laughs> I like M&M's because they're colorful. Oh, yes, the colorful M&M's. I like your face. Thank you. <laughs> that is cute. Andre, what else do you like to cook? I like to cook my own chicken. Okay. And I have my own sauce to go with it. What? Do you have your own sauce to go with you? And I have my own recipes. Oh my oh, goodness, my. Your own, you're just a little chef. Yes. Oh! <laughs> well, I'll take the cookies. <laughs> Don't let them get out. 
I think God has just answered our prayer because mm. I got an idea. Mm-hmm. Here we are. These are the cookies those youngins put together. They are certainly creatively decorated. Aren't they, though? Gummy bears and all. <laughs> but we'll get back to the cookies. Right now, I just want to make sure I understand. Your grandkids love making videos, right? They really do. They run all over the place with their iPhones, shooting whatever. Then they go over to Leslie's and get her kids to edit what they've shot. And are they good at what they do? Really good. It's unbelievable what they're able to do. <laughs> it's way out of my realm of understanding. Oh, honey. When it comes to technology, I'm two points below plant life. <laughs> but kids nowadays live and breathe it. They do. They really do. Gotta be honest with you, though. When it comes to technology and media, I stand next to Deacon Hall. Just give me a good book. I love a good book. Problem is, I got two generations behind me that can't spell the word. With them, it's media, media, very possibly media. So I gotta be honest, I've been doing some, some thinking. And I think we'd be very, very foolish not to use media to get kids back in church. If you do that, I believe my grandkids mm -hmm. would be interested again. Up to this point, they have refused to go to church. Say what? Refused? <laughs> oh, dear one, I know I'm cranky, but I gotta be honest. If they were under my roof eating my food, they'd go where I told them to go. Now, when they grow up and they're out, that's another thing. But under my roof, Sunday's church day. But like I said, I'm cranky. I know I should be firmer, but they hurt so much because they're not being raised by their parents. Oh, you just shamed me. I can see that tender grandmama's heart coming out. Yeah, okay. I mean, I understand, truly I do. Anyway, what are you thinking? <laughs>